Kia ora na. Welcome to Pacifica Wire. We're proud to provide a platform to connect our Pacifica voices, to share, celebrate and explore the issues that can impact Pacifica communities in Aotearoa, the Pacific region and around the world. On today's PW podcast, Te Ano Tuyono has made history, entering Parliament as the first list MP of Cook Islands descent for the Greens Party. Te Ano is from the island of Atiu and from Ngāpuhi and Ngai Tākoto in the north. Born in West Auckland, raised in South Auckland and resides in the Manawatu in Palmerston North. His work with Greenpeace and the United Nations has taken him across the globe and the Pacific. PW spoke with the new MP around climate change, working with the Pacifica communities on the issues of immigration, education, culture and language. Take us back to October 17th. Uh, you're sitting there. Did you ever think that you would become an MP for the Greens Party? Yeah, well, I was, we weren't too sure how the numbers were going to go down. Um, but I had like people from my campaign team and there was, and they were like checking the numbers and, and as they were coming in, because I knew on 6% I was going to get in, around about 6%. And those numbers never went under 7 So I was, I just kind of like, um, you know, flew in here. So it was a great feeling and sort of, um, you know, celebrated that with my campaign team. And, yeah. When did you start to get nervous that, you know, it was happening, you were going down this path? Probably, like, I, well, actually, the transition period was basically zero. And they rang me on Sunday morning and said I had to be in Parma on Monday morning. Right. And I was like, okay. <laughs> God. I, you know, I just hadn't thought about I didn't think about it, but I needed to transition and stuff like that. So I you know, did that, sorted that out and showed up on Monday and it's just been a whirlwind since then. Mr Tuiono, if I can ask, what motivated you to to even think about a career in politics? Uh, well, I've always been uh, like uh, involved in politics, like grassroots politics, activism and so on and so forth. Um, I was on the board of Greenpeace before this. Um, I've been active in Indigenous people's movements all around the world, working all around the Pacific. I worked at the UN as well. I was based out uh, based out in Paris for a couple of years, um, and just so I mean, and those are um, inherently very political spaces. Mm. Um, and I was actually working in North Africa um, when someone from the Greens they messaged me and said, "Would you ever thought about running for the party?" And I was like, "Well, that sounds interesting." And I forgot about that conversation. And they came back and they rang me up again, and then I signed up. And then three years later, here I am. And so naturally, like you said, that your work with Greenpeace and United Nations, it's led you to be with the Green Party, so that was a natural fit? Yeah, it was a very natural fit. Um, and But if we look, you know, like Pacific Island people are on, and our communities are on the front lines of climate change. Right. Um, and so I've always had that front of mind in terms of my politics and recognising that people are actually part of the environment as well, people in the planet, communities and the environment, those two things for me fit together. So the Greens were a natural fit for me. And you've seen it firsthand, haven't you? Through your work um, around the globe, you've actually seen firsthand the impacts of climate change. Yeah, well, I mean, it's here now. Um, and I was just up north a few months ago, and they had one of those one in 500-year storms. But the, here's the thing about those storms, they're happening very regularly, you know, mm. you say, oh, it's the one in 200 year storm, it's the one in 100 year storm, so on and so forth, but they happen so regularly. And then, of course, we began this year with those Australian bushfires, you know, yes. and um, that, which was so bad that they actually we could they stained the skies here. Um, so it's, it's here, and we just have to really organize ourselves really quickly. And I think, um, get start to get really serious about system change. Like transformational change and actually what that what that looks like. Yeah. Are we good? And I'm talking about in terms of Pacific. Are we actually good at getting the messages out there about the importance of climate change? I know for me, I'm still very green 
excuse the pun, but I just, I still don't fully understand or grasp what climate change is. Are we getting better at disseminating that information? Um, I, don't, I, we've got, I think things have gotten better, um, but it's just, there's been a, like a massive hard push from those people that still profit from doing what they have been doing, always doing, like fossil fuel companies, extractive mining industries. Um, they don't want to stop what they're doing because that's you know, their motive is profit. Uh, the problem is that those practices are extremely harmful. Uh, they contribute to, you know, the environmental devastation, but also heating up the, heating up the planet. Um, and so, you know, 99% of your scientists are saying that climate change is man-made. You know, it's man-made. Mm. And if you look at it, and if you look at the, the rate that the world is heating up, nothing can beat the last 20 years. You know, every year... Like last year was the most, was the hottest year on record. This year will be the hottest year on record and it just keeps going up and up and up. And we can only deal with that if we bring down our emissions. So that's moving out of fossil, fossil fuels, getting on to, um, you know, making sure that we move to renewable energy, but also making sure that when we transition from, from fossil fuels to renewable energy, that we can move people from people that work in those industries into clean green industries as well. So. It's, it's something that intersects across everything. It's, it is environmental, but it's also workers' rights. So talking with the trade unions, uh, talking with families and communities and making sure that we move together. Um, because it's all interconnected, isn't it? Yeah, it is all, it is, it is all interconnected. But I mean, I, what I would say to people is, you know, who's, for, who, who, who stands to make money? Who stands to make profit with the status quo? Right. You know, if we keep doing the same old thing, who stands to make you know to make money from that? And you know, it becomes quickly apparent that it's it's um, people that pollute the planet, industries that are extremely extractive, um, and so we need to um, move away from them, challenge them. I think you know, and 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 know in uncertain terms, and then you know, get moving. And, of course, with the year that is COVID-19, what type of impact yeah, do you yes. believe it's had on climate change? Has it? Um, yeah, like one, one thing we did notice was, you know, like it, people stopped flying around so much and, 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 mm. and, then, and the environment started to bounce back a bit. And so, so people noticed that. And, um, but it's also... It's also, I hope, gives us uh, a mind to focus on what we actually need as a community, as communities. I mean, we don't need we don't need to be hyper consumers. You know, a lot of the stuff that we get, yeah, especially the plastic stuff, which is actually terrible for the ocean. Um, we don't actually need it. Um, it's not good for us. Um, so for me, those are, those are one. That's one of the lessons that I, you know. I keep in I keep in mind for myself, um, but I'm also I also want the Pacific to to be connected, um, and so there was talk about like uh, having a trans Tasman bubble, and so for me I think the emphasis the priority should always be with the Pacific, but it has to be done in a way that is has the health and well being of Pacific Island communities at the forefront, so it can't just be about uh, it can't just be about the economy. The economy is important, but the health and well-being of people and the environment, it's those three things together before we start to start to open up and, and stuff like that. But the, the focus, yeah, should, should be on, on the islands. Yeah. And speaking of focus, congratulations on uh, the portfolios that you are a spokesperson for, and one of them, of course, being Pacific Peoples uh, for yeah. the Greens Party. Uh, what type of priorities are, you know, obviously climate change is one of them. Any other yeah. areas in particular that you'll be looking at? Uh, education, definitely. Um, we know that many of our people come from the islands for teaching qualifications and they can't use those here. Yes. Um, but the thing is, what we know is about children is, is that language and culture play a really strong sense in developing a child's identity. And yet we have these teachers coming from the islands who have all of those things. You know, they're they um, you know, they're native language speakers of our of our heritage languages. They have the culture and, and all those sorts of things. Those things which are very difficult for us to grow here 
in Aotearoa New Zealand. So we need to find a way to make sure that they can, they can, that their qualifications are recognised here. And if they need a bit of upskilling, that's fine as well. So that's that's one thing that's really important, uh, important for me. And also making sure that bilingual education for Pacific languages is also really important as well. Um, the other thing I'm really mindful about is um, RSC workers. Um, making sure that uh, Pacific workers that are here already are getting ripped off. Um, so we know that uh, there's going to, I think, I think numbers of around about 2,000 who are going to come over mm. um, and they're going to, you know, get the, uh, I think they're going to get, they're going to get paid properly, well, better. Uh, but the thing is, we've already got workers that are already here. We have Pacific people who are already here. And I think everybody should be on a living wage. You know, the opportunity is to lift all, all, all boats as well. Um, so I, I think that's one thing that I'm interested in advocating for. Um, and also, uh, uh, doing something for our overstayer, uh, families, our overstaying whanau as well. Um, you know, I'd like to see an amnesty for overstayers. Um, and the reason why the Greens think that is that it's understanding that, um, Aotearoa New Zealand has a long cultural and historical connections all throughout the Pacific. Um, and so it's about the recognition of that, recognition of those relationships. And for me, that's, that's really important. And that was List MP for the Greens Party. They are now to your north. Thanks for joining us. You can find the full version as a podcast on Spotify. Visit our website at www.pacificawire.com and check out our social media links at the top of the page. Fafitai ma ia manawia.